Hello guys, uh, today I will show you how you can create a domain server for Windows um, without Windows Server and just lin a Linux distribution. Um, yeah, I already tried to record this video two times because some problems with the microphone, but I hope this works now. Um, yes, first of all, I'm not a native speaker, I'm from Germany, and so everything, first of all, is here in German, how you, uh, what you maybe see. And if my pronunciation or my voc vocabulary or something like that isn't that good, I hope, yeah, you, yeah. So now let's get started. We will um, use a distribution called called Sen Yal. I always need to read it because I just um, have don't get how quite how it's pronounced pronunciation pronunciate yes um yes so it's not it's a linux distribution but it's um based on ubuntu we have 64 bit here um yeah because we have 64 bit uh, iso which we will install later and yeah it is based off ubuntu um server i think um, oh now it Ma uh, it makes problems because we already have a tutorial machine which I created in the first tutorial. So I'll name this tutorial one, and it works. Yeah. Now we need to set a RAM, and we leave it at half a giga gigabyte. It's uh, enough for this. Maybe if you have very much PCs later in your domain, you maybe need more. Yeah, eight gigabyte is also fine. Now we create a hard drive. Yeah. Now we now here I need to you you can need to select where the hard drive is stored, and the di uh, the file is um, as large as the files on your um, on your um, hard disk and your virtual machine, but never it's never larger than eight gigabyte. Yeah. So this is the file. This is where I store it. Maybe you store it at a different place. I don't know. And yeah, so we are ready to start. We will now start up the virtual machine. Um yeah, and now we will need to select an ISO. We have here Cential 4.1 development for 64 bits and we will use this. Start. You got, could already see that it's it that it isn't that big. And um, we will use English delete all disks because on this disk it's nothing we just created it and so there are no that no files yeah yeah while it's starting here i will uh, i want to say that this will be a whole tutorial tutorial series today i will show you um how to set it up and uh, set it up how to install it next videos will be how to set it up maybe there's some more videos uh, and then I will show you how you run it on a real PC, not on a virtual machine, but on a real server. Yeah, we will use English. We are from United Kingdom. We are from Germany, as I already said, but United Kingdom is closest um, to where I actually live. Yes, it has this key. Ah, oh, yes. Here. No. And yes, this is my keyboard, so continue. So it now takes some time to detect the hardware. Yeah, it is pretty fast actually. But um, as I remember, now it will take some time to um, start stuff and so. And I will maybe pause the video because you don't need to look at how everything here is set up. Yeah, it does this now. Normally it isn't that long sometimes even shorter than um, installing Windows 7 or something so for uh, server OS it isn't it is very good the installation time so I'm back again I made a mistake this wasn't the installation it just loaded some additional um, files it needs later the installation will come a little bit later because just slightly over a minute would be very 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 fast for installation so now we need to set a host name because this won't be used in my real home network where I later will use it for my PC and my um, laptop. 
I will just name this test server, but with a not bit of lower case starting and continue. So yes, my username is Colin, just my real name. And my password is test one two three four. You should choose a safe password, this is just for testing, I won't use this server later so it doesn't really matter. We now read to and uh, we now need to retype it. So yes, continue. Yeah, it is correct. And now I think it will install. Just wait a second, not that I make a mistake again. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But I think we set all that we need, so it yeah, it was very likely. Yeah, it's installing the system, so we, now we, we will make a shortcut. So after eight minutes, it's nearly finished. As you can see, it. Nah, I don't have a mouse pointer here, but you can see it as, as finishing installation. The installation, yes. Um, what I forgot is, I don't know if I already mentioned it. I don't think so. That you need at least professional Windows professional, um, no matter which uh, version, to use domains because. Um, with Home Premium or Home Basics, for example, with 7 or 8, I don't know about Vista, I don't use Vista, I have 7 and 8, uh, it won't work and presumably not with Windows 10 either. And so, yes, it now says here that we should remove the installation media. Um, if this was a real machine and not just a ISO, then your CD tra tray will, would probably open if we click here, continue. Now it's just um, ejecting the ISO. You can see this if you are going. I think uh, it was under Geräte. It says here it's Eng uh, it's German for devices. You can see um, here is no um, CD selected. If I would select something, Hostlau uh, Hostlaufwerk E is my um, DVD drive at my PC. Yeah. Sorry, that is all German, but um, I will translate it if um, you need to know anything. Um, and if you don't, yeah, I probably won't say it because, yeah, it isn't then necessary. So now we are seeing that um, it's ju it's just fini finishing up the installation, which usually don't take that long. So I don't know if I make a cut. Um, probably I just speed it up or, yeah, cut it out or something like that. Um yeah. What now I will be uh, explain maybe uh, what the domain is a little bit more because I don't really know what I said and what I didn't say because um yeah I made t uh, two attempts now this is the third and so I don't know what I said in which attempt so if I say something twice or forget it completely please um yeah I'm very sorry about this I hope you can forgive me. Yeah. And the main will work, um, yeah, this will work as a domain controller, I already mentioned that. Um, it can also work as an email control uh, server or something else. It's a small, hof uh, small office home office server, so it isn't exactly for, yeah, just um, your home, but you can use it for that too, yeah, because home office or just home for entertainment, I think that is doesn't make a big difference. So yeah, for what uh, for what I will use it, it's I will later put it on a physical um, machine, something very small that don't use that much power. I already talked about a Raspberry Pi I had laying around, which uh, until now used Zamba for um, file sharing under Windows. But the problem with it is maybe the processing architecture, the um, yeah, the processor with 700 mega megahertz. Maybe be even, uh, maybe would be even be enough, um, but I think it has an ARM process architecture, and you, uh, I think here you need an x86 or an um, yeah or an 64-bit based processor, so it just won't work because it has a bad processor architecture, and yeah, it, um, I already tried once to install Kerberos, which is the software that Centile also uses for the domain, but it didn't work. It took an eternity to install, I think nearly half a day 
because it is just very slow in the air. But what it will actually do to the main is that you can o use it all PCs that are chained into the into the um domain you can use the same credentials so you can so later I will be able to use the same credentials for my laptop or my PC and now you may ask then why don't you set just the same user and stuff it is not only about that but I am um, it will also has all of the uh, all the same files because the files won't be stored on my PC then I will maybe remove my two terabyte hard drive out of my main PC and just use the SSD that is um, in it yeah, and then the uh, uh, HD c comes to um, to the server, and yes, um, so I will have the data on all drives, and I because sometimes I look on my PC for a file, and later go to my laptop just to find it there, and so it isn't that practical, and I could use a uh, NAS for example somewhere, but the problem, yeah, you need to use free file sync or other drives or just leave the files there, and I think it is. Not bad. Maybe it would be just the same, but um, I just want to know how to use a, a domain, and I like domains. <laughs> yeah, so it isn't actually necessary. I just could uh, use a Samba server, but I just really like this distribution of Linux because it has a web interface which already started here. It does this automatically, and uh, yeah, it's I fi just find it very practically. I could use Samba, so. But yeah, I rather like this one. <laughs> and the other problem the Raspberry Pi has it that is only that it's limited to at about three megabits per second uh, transfer rate, which is not that great bec um, because if you transfer large files, it just takes an eternity. And so yeah, I used it with a 64 gigabyte uh, USB stick. For example, most of the time to go uh, to take it with me and share files with my friends if, if we are on vacation together and stuff like that. But now I could, will probably use it still for that and maybe make a tutorial about it. But yeah, that isn't. R Sorry that I made this video so long now because it doesn't have anything to do with Santiel. But yeah. That was it for now. Um, later I will log onto this and make a video about installing and configuring packages and stuff like that. But if I would do this in this video, it will probably get too long. And so, yes. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something. And till next guy. Uh, till next time.